the program of Discipline Talk. In this video, we are going to learn about Vedic education, features, aims, process of education, and curriculum. Let us start without any wastage of time. Vedic education. It is the system of education that was developed during Vedic period is termed as the Vedic system of education. The administration and organization of education mean it almost the same. Throughout the Vedic period, the adma- advancement of our time, age, and skills. Its curriculum and uh, teaching methods prevent a change. Talking about the main features of Vedic education summarized in the following sequence. Book, Administration and Finance of Education The education was totally free from a state control and was completely under the individual control of the gurus, the teachers, not on the state control. Free education Gurus themselves arranged for being and broadening of the students. Students, of course, used to pay Guru Dikshina the teachers bring to their financial position and violation. Sources of income was donation, dan, guru dikshina. At the time, the kings, emperors and affluent sections of the society voluntarily gave donations in form of land, animals, grains, cloths, utensils, money of these guru kulas. The students bagged alarms from society to meet the day-to-day needs of the guru kulas. Third source of the income of a Guru Kulas was Guru Dakshana. After the completion of education, students paid Guru Dakshana according to the individual violation. It could be land, animals, grains, cloths, and money. Thinking about the main features of Vedic education, first one is free education in ancient India. In ancient India, teaching was considered to be the holy duty. A Brahman was bound to discharge respective of situation uh, of the free teacher were expected to devote their lives to the cause of teaching in the missionary spirit of self-sacrifice. Society laid down the principle that both public and the state should have learned teachers and educational institutions is very liberally. Society uh, realized that the adana or the gift in the cause of education to be the best of gifts was a single higher religious m- merit and even the gift of land. The occasion of a religion fetus, students and teachers uh, were invited, donations were, were given liberally. After that, talking about the second part, which is uh, no state control on education. Rulers of the country had very little directly to do with education. It was a private affairs of the pe- people, managed entirely by Brahmins. That time, there was a high status of teachers, so teachers were highly honored, class honored to do with uh, education. Rose from Tharnas to receive great teachers, jazz. Narada, Yastha, and Vishwamitra. During a Vedic period, teachers as a parents. Teachers behaved as parents to the pupils and pupils behaved as the member of the teacher's family. The tour of the pupil to be uh, one of complete submission. At time, there were uh, resi- residential schools where teachers and pupils laid together and identified themselves with one another. So that time the immediate aim of education was vocational uh, and uh, however it was uh, to prepare the different costs of people from their actual needs of life. About the curriculum, subjects of instruction varied according to the vocational needs of different costs from the Vedas, Etnagas in the case of Brahmanas to the art of uh, warfare in the case of to go agriculture and trade and crafters in the case of Vaishyas. Talking about the methods of instruction, the methods of instruction was generally consisted of recitation by the teachers and repetition by pupil. Teacher questioning by the pupil and discussion between teacher and the pupil. Talking about method of study, method, method of study uh, consisted in listening to, to the teacher, reflection on what has been listened, its constant revision and discussion. One more point, uh, Sanskrit as a medium of instruction. Time the medium of instruction was Sanskrit. Talking about self-control and self-discipline, it was considered to be the best discipline. However, corporate punishment 
was not altogether ruled out. Talking about widespread education of women in the earlier Vedic period and uh, in short times, girls were free to go uh, through the Apnayana ceremony, live a life of Besi, study Vedas, Itangas, and other subjects along with their other pootless. Ultimate aim of education was self realization. So the ultimate aim of education in ancient India was not a knowledge as preparation of life in this world or for the beyond but for a complete realization of, for, of self for a liberation of the soul, patterns of life, present and future. That knowledge was real which led to emancipation from unreality to reality, from darkness to light, from death to immorality, sorry, immortality about the aims of education during a Vedic period so first aim is inculcating religion preaching religion was the major function of literature and culture of ancient India religion was predominant in every sphere of life so it may be said ancient India was built up in religions much more than in political economic and social field second aim of education was salvation it was the ultimate of aim of a human society that that age was the achievement of Brahma, which he himself is, and it was recognized that the entire visible world in fully revealed with the absolute At time. The proper belief in India is that gaining knowledge will also lead to salvation. Talking about the third education, development of knowledge. During a Vedic period, knowledge was considered to be the third eye of man. Two eyes merely help us to preserve the concrete and uh, material world whereas the third eye enables us to be comprehend the material and a uh, metaphysical world both shift us to the fact from action clarifies that do's and do nots and enlightens the path of physical and spiritual achievements talking about the fourth aim which is acquaintances and observance of social and national duties the fourth chief aim of a Vedic education where the students met with their duties towards the society, the nation and they were duly trained in their observance. Samavartan was held at the completion of education. The aim is preservation and development of culture. India culture since inception was being religion oriented out mode of living to have this customs and traditions values all were based on religion therefore the aim of education during vedic period was the preservation and transmission of our culture talking about the sixth aim which is moral and character development during vedic period character development uh, or also called the character building met train people to behave according to religion to provide pop proper direction to their conduct and thinking the basis of religion or the moral and character development of the child or we can say children they were educated in religion and ethics inception of Vedic period they were trainer in activities like observance of celibacy control of sense organs and self control talking about the seventh aim education of livelihood arts and skills Students were educated in agriculture, cattle rearing, and under other crafters and cyclists according to their ability. However, in the later Vedic period, the occupation based on cost system was replaced by cost based occupation. As a result of people were them educated according to their caste, the Brahmins were trained in religious activity and teaching kashtriyas warriors in the admin administration and war and the vicious business class in agriculture, cattle, cattle rearing, trade and commerce. Talking about the curriculum of uh, Vedic education, the curriculum of education during Vedic period was divided into two parts, which is mater materialistic and spiritual. Let's know about material, material uh, curriculum, so it included language, grammar, neurology, agriculture, cattle rearing. Talking about the spiritual curriculum, it included Vedic literature, theology, ethics, and training in activities like sense control of sense organs, religion based conduct, mode of worship, worship, evening prayers, etc. According to recent researches, following disciplines were included in the curriculum in the graded forms in accordance with the stages of education. Look anthropology, astrono astronomy, 
اکنامکس اپسٹمالوجی کاٹولوجی اتھنالوجی جیولوجی ون یوجنسس تھیمیٹکس ملٹری سائنس ٹائم دا سسٹم آف ایجوکیشن واز ویل آرگنائزڈ واز سوٹ ٹو دی نیڈس آف دی سوسائٹی ایجوکیشن واز کنسڈرڈ ایز دے گریٹسٹ گفٹ ان انڈیا اٹ واز ایمڈ ایٹ دے ڈیولپمنٹ آف پرسنالٹی آف این انڈیویژول ٹو ہز میگزیمم ایکسٹینڈ ایجوکیشن ہیلپڈ ان دا ریئلائزیشن آف اسپریچول اینڈ مورل ویلیو سائڈس پریپیئرنگ فار ورلڈی پرسیوٹس اٹ واز فریلی اویلیبل ٹو آل دوز ہو وانٹ ٹو relations between teachers and the pupils are based on love and affection they were very cordial and intimate think about the education of women and the role of mother in education during vedic period the vedas give a very honorable and respectable status to women they were eligible for higher education for the study of vedas and the performance of administrative and other important jobs mostly performed by men even today boys should go to the schools meant for the boys and go to the schools where they were for women teachers they there were there are women teachers the women should have an opportunity to attain knowledge of the vedas from all the four concerns role of mother in education a mother should in important role uh, to her children so as to broaden their horizon at this stage the good manners are to be taught so that the children behave properly with their elders and in assembly at that time the teachers were considered as spiritual as well as an intellectual guide for students teacher occupied a pivotal position in the vedic system of education teacher was in parents surrogate which means parents substitute facilitator of learning exemplar and in aspirer confident dictator and philosopher moral educator former evaluator character and personality builder porter of knowledge and wisdom and above all a guru religious and spiritual guide also the relationship between the teachers and pupil was regarded as a filial in character the teacher was the spiritual father of his pupils in addition to imparting intellectual knowledge to them he was also morally responsible and he was al- always ke- to keep a guard over the conduct of his pupils he must know let them know what to cultivate and what to avoid he must instruct them as how to sleep and as to what they may take and what they may reject he should advise them as to people whose company feel should keep as a which of the village and the, uh, localities they should frequent during the vedic period learning was transmitted orally, orally from one generation to another generation great importance was attached to the proper accent and the pronunciation in vedic recitation and this could be correctly learned only from the lips of a properly qualified teacher spiritual solution department depended almost entirely upon the proper guidance of a competent teacher duties of teachers towards students is to make uh, arrangement for students lodging food and clothes and to take after the health of the students and arrange treatment in the case of falling ill and to compulsory impart education in lang- language religion and ethics and to teach students good conduct and build their character in a spice students towards activities work doing and prevent them from undesirable activities talking about the methods of teaching during vedic education are uh, there by are uh, there by many methods uh, which are we, uh, during vedic period first method is oral method oral method the students were to memorize the mantras and rituals verses of rigveda in order that uh, they might not be changed wrongly and they might remain preserved in the original forms the oral method correct pronunciation was specially emphasized it is meant for every student we about the second method which is thinking method through this an attempt was made to preserve the veda mantras and rituals which are vedic verses and third method is manas reflection method it was a higher method of teaching than thinking mantras were developed and preserved in uh, one's own mind this method was used to encourage intelligent students by guiding them to make research in about the admission and evaluation system during a vedic period so it seems to be a no direct reference available to spell out the methodology followed by an 
Acharya to judge the adequacy of knowledge uh, of his pupils. Yaska and Sanya must contempt con commentators on, on the Vedic Vedas have inferred from the Rig Veda Hymen students were given three grades as under the grade is Maha Parjana grade students of very high ability. So talking about Madhyana, Madhyama, Parjana grade these are the students uh, of high ability and Alpha Parjana grade these are the students of low ability talking about the autonomy of educational institutions and studentship during Vedic period. Jurus in the Vedic period was a very autonomous in the work and they followed various methods of admission and assessment. A teacher was a sole pedagogic authority to decide whether the student was fit for admission and also to decide whether he had completed his studies. So students here there is a long time in the Traveda describing the ceremony pertaining to studentship, the intention ceremony called Apayana which lasted three days lead uh, down the foundation of a planet life. The pupil over his first birth physical to his parents and the second second uh, birth spiritual to his teacher. The rite of Apayanana was meant to purify body and mind to take it to make one fit for receiving education. After Apayanana, the pupil entered into the state of Brahmacharya. Due to that, it was a mode of life in the system of education. Brahmachari as the parent for education was now called a living according to scabber uh, regulations that is physical discipline as well as spiritual discipline so it's all about vedic education in ancient india thanks for watching have a nice day